This welcoming to Ireland will be in three parts. The first, the Irish delegates will say a few words. Then the minister will welcome you and say a few words on behalf of the Irish government. And then we will have a video, imagine, and some music to inspire and nurture your networking this week. Then I will hand you over to the IC's president, Bill Carp, and he will start the IC's proceedings. So the first part of this is welcome to Dublin. On behalf of Ireland and the Irish delegates for Ireland, Kieran Kelly and myself, Paul Connolly, we would like to welcome the ICES community to Ireland for this year's ASC. Both those here physically and those joining remotely, Falcha, Cade Mila Falcha. Planning the ASC this year was a dynamic journey with many subtle and not so subtle adjustments called for. Our initial venue, Dublin Castle, had to be changed. Our initial dates had to be changed because of a Garth Brook concert on the north side of the city. Five concerts that played to over 300,000 people sent hotel prices rocketing and accommodation was a premium. And then the media was full of airport chaos. But we are agile, we adjusted, we held our nerve and now you're all here. The numbers are very impressive. 500 registered, 200 remotely, that's 700, that's pretty good. The last four years for the ASC has been a roller coaster. In 2019, we had the old model. In 2020, it was canceled because of COVID. 2021, fully remote, and now this year, hybrid. The debate on the way to go with the ASC is now a really important one for ICES. Many have contributed to making this event a reality, but I want to acknowledge the work of Helen Bowles at the Marine Institute and Anne Davies at ICES for all their work, coordination and cooperation in getting us to this point. And I would say this is in the real spirit of ICES. I want to acknowledge our sister agency, Bordy Skiwara, who have been a great support in allowing Ireland to deliver this conference. I can promise you some great musical and magical entertainment that will nurture and inspire the networking, which is what this conference really is all about. Our IC's mascot, Leo Bloom, who you've met already, will guide you around the conference venue. And if there was a recommendation I would make, Leo Bloom was inspired by Ulysses James Joyce novel, which is all about Dublin. And if you want to challenge, buy the book, remember Dublin and try and read it. Some thoughts from the delegates. The last three years have turned the world upside down. COVID-19 has reshaped all aspects of society. The war in Ukraine has hit food and fuel security. And extreme weather events are now really hurting coastal communities around the globe. Science has been asked many hard questions and the ocean is seen as the answer to many of these challenges particularly in the area of renewable energy space, seafood and human well-being. Many of these will be discussed at this year's ASC and the relevance of ICES in addressing things like the UN Sustainability Goals, Decade of the Ocean, Offshore Renewable Energy, Sustainable Seafood and a Digital Twin Ocean, to name but a few, is greater than ever. ICES is a community, a network. We support each other. We are made up of people. As everyone will know, today is the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. On behalf of Ireland, the host country for this year's ASC, we wish to express our deepest condolences to His Majesty King Charles III, to the Royal Family, and to our UK ICES colleagues on the passing of Her Majesty. For more than seven decades, Queen Elizabeth's commitment to her role and her deep dedication to public service has been admired across the world. May the legacy of Queen Elizabeth provide comfort to her family, the people of the UK at this time, as they mourn her loss. Er yesh de goreva hanam usul, 
And that's an Irish statement. May she rest in peace. I now want to introduce you to the second component of our welcoming. And I would like to introduce Ireland's Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Charlie McConnellog. He will officially open the ASC and say a few words to the ISIS community on behalf of the Irish government. He could not be here in person today, but he has recorded a message. He will come to the ISIS dinner on Wednesday, meet up with members of ACOM and SICOM and engage with the ISIS community. And he looks forward to that personal engagement and to get to know ISIS better. So I'm going to introduce you to that video. Then I will come back and introduce you to our video and musical interlude and then hand you over to the ISIS president. So without further ado, a message from the minister and the Irish government. Thank you. As Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, and on behalf of the Irish Government and our two marine agencies involved with this conference, the Marine Institute and Board Iski Wara, I'm delighted to welcome the ISIS Annual Science Conference to Dublin. I want to welcome all delegates here attending in person in Dublin today and those joining the conference remotely from all over the world. This is the first opportunity for the ISIS community to meet in person since 2019. A particular welcome to ISIS President Bill Carp and to the recently appointed General Secretary Alan Haney. Ireland is delighted to host the conference, which I understand is bringing together almost 500 delegates to Dublin with a further 200 joining remotely. The conference provides a great opportunity for the over 700 marine institutions across 20 member countries working in the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans, the Mediterranean and Black Seas, and the North Pacific Ocean to come together to discuss the latest science that will form the basis for ICE's advice. It also provides a forum for scientists to present and discuss the latest science, develop new ideas and develop partnerships. As an intergovernmental marine science organisation, you will be aware of how ISIS works to meet societal needs through the provision of impartial evidence on the state and sustainable use of our oceans. You're working in advance or you're working advancing and sharing scientific understanding of marine ecosystems and using this knowledge to generate state of the art advice supports the decision making process involved in meeting management, conservation and sustainable goals. International cooperation and coordination in marine science is the linchpin of ISIS work. And as Minister for Responsible for the Marine, I'm delighted that Ireland has been a strong advocate of the key goal of ISIS to advance and share scientific understanding of marine ecosystems and to use this knowledge to better inform decisions. ISIS also has an important voice in the international arena communicating ocean knowledge to an increasingly globalised audience, keen to understand the best available science. Ireland has a long relationship with ISIS, joining in 1925, and is one of the first international organisations which our then young and recently formed state became closely linked to. Ireland has hosted the ISIS annual science conference on two previous occasions in 1969 and 1993. It has provided ISIS with three presidents to date, Arthur Went, David Griffith and Paul Connolly, who is currently the Chief Executive of Ireland's Marine Institute. It is also worth noting that the official president's chain of office was presented to ISIS in Dublin at the 1969 annual science conference by the Arthur Guinness Company, further evidence of ISIS links with Ireland. As an island nation on the frontier of the Atlantic Ocean, Ireland appreciates the crucial importance of impartial evidence on the state and sustainable use of our seas and oceans. In order to deal with issues affecting the sustainable management and understanding of the Atlantic Ocean, there is a requirement for countries to collaborate and cooperate on collection of data, scientific research, and sharing this to better inform advice on the sustainable use of this vast resource. This collaborative approach will become increasingly important for issues 
such as climate impacts and mitigation, offshore renewable energy, marine spatial planning, marine protected areas, and in common with all nations, the impacts of climate change are high on the agenda for Ireland. At this event, Ireland will bring together four of its leading scientists working in different but linked fields to explore what we know and what we don't yet know about climate in the Atlantic, with a particular focus on changes in the wider North Atlantic, where changes in water temperature are being de detected along with some conflicting trends, also focusing on changes in distribution of fish species in the Atlantic, examining why there are some clear indicators of change across some, but not all species. We need to understand what the key drivers of this may be in respect of climate change, fishing and other factors. Also focusing on how our coasts store carbon in seagrass beds and salt marshes. As these habitats are impacted by a warming climate, areas such as sea marshes may decrease. Focusing as well on how these issues will impact the citizen, particularly those living in coastal communities and whose livelihoods depend on an ocean that is rapidly changing. The considerations and discussions taking place this week will be important in providing integrated independent advice going forward now and important as well to those directly involved as well as wider society. Ireland is proud of its long association with ISIS and the valuable international platform it provides for marine data, science and advice. Through the involvement of our marine agencies, the Marine Institute and Board Iskiwara, we will continue to work with the ISIS community to further develop our understanding of the ocean and to ensure that we have the best science and advice available to manage this vast resource in a rapidly changing environment. In conclusion, I want to wish you all an interesting and thought-provoking conference and an enjoyable stay here in Dublin, our capital city on Ireland's beautiful East Coast. Thank you and welcome to Ireland. Okay, the third part of the Irish welcome is a visual and musical treat for you, which we hope, as I said earlier, inspires and nurtures the networking. The first is a video which is about youth, which is about the ocean, which is about their future, and which is about our responsibilities to that future. Then we will have a musical interlude by the Irish Chamber Orchestra. It will perform music by Philip Glass, Symphony Number no. 3, Movement 3, to be specific, which was first performed and written in 1995. Philip Glass is an American composer from Baltimore and Maryland, in Maryland, US. And I would like to think of this music as a connect with the Atlantic between both sides of it. It's a great lab space for ICES and its community. So without further ado, we have the Imagine video, then the Irish Chamber Orchestra, and then we hand over to Bill Carp to introduce ICES and the business of the week. Have a great week and be the honour the intuck again, Irish. Have a great time. Enjoy the networking and I hope it's a productive conference. Thank you. Imagine, imagine all that is great. Like a man who travelled to the farthest corners or the monks who set course for the edge of Europe. To the dolphin that stole our hearts 
an island nation with an ocean full of tales. Where the sea is our story. It's who we are. Navigators. Voyagers. Explorers. Scientists of the sea. It's our history, our present, and our future. The sea is calling, and the moment is now. Let's protect it. Let's nourish it. And together, we can safeguard our ocean ecosystems. Inspired by greatness, Let's chart a safe passage for future generations. Now, open your eyes. So we can all see the future together.
What an incredible performance and what an incredible welcome. Ireland and the Irish are famous for their welcome and their welcoming spirit. But I think I can speak on behalf of all of us in, in, in saying that this has surpassed our expectations. This has set the scene for a fantastic meeting and every aspect of this um, opening ceremony from the Irish side has been just wonderful and inspiring. It's customary for the ISIS president to say a few words at the opening of an annual science conference. At least I think it's customary. It's been a while since this opportunity has actually come up in person. And this is a special uh, annual science conference for several reasons. But it doesn't mean that you have to listen to a long and boring speech. I'm as keen as you to begin the scientific proceedings. So I'll be brief. Since we met in Gothenburg in 2019, much has changed for each of us, for ISIS and the world. The impacts of the pandemic have been substantial, and the war in Europe has profoundly and negatively impacted the lives of so many. These events have impacted scientific collaboration within ICES and much more broadly, and have added considerable complexity to our advisory work. Secretariat staff, our committee chairs, and the entire network, the lifeblood of ICES, have been under extraordinary stress as they've been asked to adapt to many related challenges. In the midst of this difficult period, our General Secretary, Anne Christine Brusendorf, stepped down unexpectedly. Anne Christine served as General Secretary for 10 years, and her impact 
was remarkable and profound. She was greatly loved and appreciated. Under her leadership, we became a stronger and more relevant organization, and we knew immediately that she would be very difficult to replace. We were able to recruit a truly, a truly excellent new general secretary who began work on August 1st. I'll introduce him shortly. But the recruitment process was time consuming, and in the interim, our chairs, line managers, and secretariat staff were called upon to go even further above and beyond the call of duty. During that period, I spent a great deal of time in Copenhagen. This was an unexpected pleasure for me and a unique opportunity to better understand how we work as an organization and how fortunate we are to have such a professional, strong, and resilient staff. Our, our scientific and advisory activities continue to thrive and advance in spite of these challenges. And through our unique structure, which harnesses the skills and creativity of a vast network of scientists, and is enabled by an outstanding professional staff and our unique committee structure. While we're fortunate to have first-class managers and chairs, leadership is apparent throughout, and I want to thank everyone for their remarkable dedication and commitment during the last three years. We've demonstrated that we're strong, adaptable, and resilient, but we're also good learners, and we're drawing from these experiences to develop a change agenda that will make us even stronger, more adaptable, and resilient. This week, you will see and have the opportunity to contribute to many aspects of this change agenda. I'd like to mention three aspects that I consider to be particularly important and overarching. Our commitment to fully engaging early career scientists, our draft gender equality plan, and our draft code of conduct. In different ways, each of these initiatives strongly signals our commitment to change and to diversity, equality, and inclusion. Hosting an ASC takes an unusual commitment during the best of times, and as Paul has already mentioned, these were not the best of times. Ireland has been a strong and essential member of ICES since they signed the original convention in 1925. Irish scientists have always been active participants in all the areas that ICES works, often, as we heard, in leadership positions. Ireland is a, is a leader in marine science, as will be showcased today and later this week. And marine science has never mattered more. Under normal circumstances, the logistics of hosting an ASC are daunting. But these are not normal times, and the organize, organizers have had to deal with complex and interacting uncertainties, uh, as, as, as Paul mentioned in his, in his introductory comments. Given Paul's earlier comments, I'll also avoid the temptation to offer further commentary on American cultural colonialism exemplified by the concerts that uh, interfered with the planning process <laughs> for this conference. I'd like to offer special thanks to the two delegates, the two Irish delegates, Paul Connolly and Kieran Kelly from the Irish Marine Institute. I'd also like to acknowledge the Marine Institute and the board Ishkaiwara, the Irish Seafood Development Agency for supporting the event. Helen Bowles, again, deserves special mention for her work organizing the conference from the Irish side, as do the Irish ACOM and SICOM members, Francis O'Burney and Colm Norton. I'd also like to thank SICOM for planning such an exciting program that is especially relevant to the scientific challenges we face today. Staff from, thru from throughout the Secretariat have worked very hard to make sure this is a, a successful and memorable uh, event. I was reminded of this yesterday when I visited the venue and saw so many of them working on last minute arrangements. Anna Davis, our IC's ASC coordinator, deserves special mention for her dedication and, and hard work. And I'd like to mention everyone who deserves credit, but time does not allow. It takes a village, whether it is to raise a child or organize an ASC. I mentioned that we had recruited an outstanding candidate to become our new general secretary. With the help of a consultancy, we were able initially to identify several hundred potential candidates. Ultimately, we interviewed the top six, and from among them, Dr. Alan Haney was selected. Since his arrival in Copenhagen a few weeks ago, he has clearly demonstrated the qualities that impressed the selection panel and has already begun to make an essential and strongly positive difference. I wish I had more time to tell you about Alan, but I encourage you to introduce yourselves to him and get to know him this week. In closing, let me reiterate my thanks to our Irish hosts and everyone in ICS who's played a role in organizing this ASC. 
wish each of you an enjoyable, stimulating, and rewarding conference, and call upon Dr. Haney to introduce himself. And to say that it's a pleasure to see all of you here in person and hopefully to be seen by those who are joining us virtually. This is going to be an exciting uh, annual science conference and I'm very excited to be part of it. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks to you all. It's wonderful to be here and welcome to the ASC. Thank you to Paul and the minister and, and the incredible musicians who, who welcomed us. Um, I'm going to give a few more words in a minute, but I'm going to first say a couple of, of kind of housekeeping comments, um, which first of all, if you haven't downloaded Whova, the, the app, and those of you out there across the world, we welcome you also. We know you're, you're there. All of the presentations, the agenda are, are there. And there's also a, an interactive forum where you can ask questions and, and make connections for things to do in the evenings, lots of different activities. Um, also want to talk quickly about, about COVID. And so um, feel free to wear a mask if, if that makes you more comfortable, um, but it, it's not required. Um, we have tests and masks um, at the reception. And if you uh, are feeling ill, please uh, do not come in. Um, to put it bluntly, um, but take care of yourselves and, and really take advantage of this wonderful opportunity we have once again to, to be together in the, in the same room. So before I make a few remarks, I'm going to quickly introduce three incredible leaders of the ICES community um, who are going to briefly talk about our three strategic in initiatives. So Amanda Schoenberg, Kathy Mills, and Ketel Hamon um, are going to come up for, for just a minute, and then I, I'll return. So Amanda. Thank you, Alan. Um, we had some slides prepared. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's no clicker, so I'll have to tell you the next one, please. But uh, my name is Amanda Schaderberg, and I'm here on behalf of SEEKS, which is the strategic initiative for the integration of early career scientists. So the aim of SEEKS is to engage early career scientists in the wonderful work of ICES in a way that's mutually beneficial for both the organization and for the young scientists. And the next slide, please. Um, and we're a network of 20 marine early career scientists who are actively engaged monthly. And there's a broader list of more than 150 early career scientists that we're working with and hope to work with further in the coming years. One more click, thank you. And just quickly to brag about some of the achievements so far in the first official year of the initiative, we've got an early career scientist on stage this week as a keynote speaker, and that will be part of the ASC moving forward. We've also launched an article series within the IC's Journal of Marine Science, which we're very proud of. We've been contributing to the wonderful work on diversity, equity, and inclusion. We've also brought together an interdisciplinary publication with another one in the works. Uh, this afternoon, there'll also be a network session, which we invite early career scientists and representatives of working groups to join, where we're trying to connect early career scientists and get them involved in what the working groups do. And coming up in October is something that uh, SEEKS has been heavily involved in, which is the IC's Digital Open Day, which you'll hear more about at the network session as well. So I'll leave it at that. I'll keep it brief. Uh, one more click from IT. Thank you. Um, so yeah, please enjoy the conference. And uh, if you have any more questions, I'm here. There's also Ellen, Robert, and Oko uh, who are here from SEEKS. Please reach out to us and uh, ask if you wanted to get involved. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Kathy Mills. Dr. Alan Baldron and I are chairs of the ICES and Pisces Strategic Initiative on Climate Change Impacts on Marine Ecosystems. So SICME was created to advance the scientific capacity within ICES and Pisces to understand, estimate, and predict impacts of climate change on ecosystems and fisheries. Our interests span from impacts and responses through adaptation to how climate information can be integrated into decision making. Our work takes the form of supporting um, community building, communication, and collaborations across ICES and Pisces. Essentially, SICME is the eyes and ears on climate change for both ICES and Pisces. So we're really interested in hearing more about activities and projects you all are involved in that are relevant to this topic. I hope you'll seek out 
Alan or me at the meeting. And we also have a session this evening with the um, Strategic Initiative on Human Dimensions, looking at human dimensions of climate change. So please come join us then as well. Thank you. Yes, so um, my name is Katel Hamon. I'm uh, the chair of the strategic initiative on the human dimension. Up to a few months ago, Alan was also a chair with me, but uh, he left me for a greater career. Um, so the strategic initiative is is uh, around also a number of working group uh, of ISIS. So the, the one on the balancing Eco uh, economic, social, and uh, ecological objectives on maritime system, on social indicators, and on economics. We also have workshops. So there was one on challenge and opportunities of integrating human dimension uh, in um, integrated ecosystem assessments and on um, stakeholder engagement strategy. And uh, so all the activities and we have a forum and all of this uh, basically um, helps us um, strengthen our, our vision that's here. That's around three points, the community. So you researchers working on human dimension uh, who are doing amazing research uh, so that we can in, um, provide um, integrated um, e evidence based advice uh, to have a, a better uh, a better um, Sorry, a, be a, be a better human dimension advice. And um, so if you see this uh, this sticker, so basically that's how you recognize us uh, in, uh, in this uh, community. Thank you. Thank you, Katel, Kathy, and Amanda. Uh, it's not time for the award yet, but... Um, I guess I stand between you, you and the awards. Um, so I want to I go back to thank yous first and just really give a resounding thank you to to all of the staff, the secretariat, who the, the line man in the absence, um, as Bill mentioned, after you know 10 years, incredible leadership from Anna Christine. Um, the last year, the, there was an interim period before before I started last month and the, the line managers um, stepped up and did an incredible role. Many people in the secretariat really, as you all have experienced the, the challenges of, of war and the COVID and many different fronts, it's been a challenge. So I, just, I really wanted to just quickly thank all of them. Thank you, thank you all so much. So it's, it's with great gratitude and happiness that, that I join you here as, as General Secretary. I've spent um, the last 20 years approximately working at, at NOAA in, in Seattle at the Alaska Fishery Science Center. And most of the last 15 years, I've uh, been active in different ways in, in ICES, been involved in, in SICME and, with, and the climate um, front is how I originally became involved and then um, have been, as Cadell mentioned, with um, the chair of the strategic initiative of the human dimension. But I'm, I've been part of the science committee for the last five years, but I'm really excited and it's a fantastic experience now just to learn about all of the aspects of, of the organization. Um, so since I started working the secretary, one of the things I've been doing is sitting down with, with every staff person and talking about, about what they do. And something that, that being here already today, something that, that's come up again and again, people have said, you're so lucky to have such an incredible staff. Um, and it's true, I see that. It's, it's really a, a remarkable, wonderful group of people. But something that they all, all voice is how much they value our common mission and how much they enjoy and feel privileged to work with you all. That that's a highlight of their lives and they, the work that they do, it's really motivated by all of you. So um, on behalf of, of everyone, the Secretariat, I wanna thank all of you too for all that you do. So it's, it's fantastic to be in Dublin. So uh, Paul mentioned James Joyce. So I was, I was first introduced to, uh, to Dublin through, through James Joyce, um, through you know, Portrait of an Artist uh, as a young man originally, and then through struggling to try to read Ulysses. But uh, the, uh, you know, in, in his masterpiece, you know, what Joyce did, he took the epic journey um, of, of Odysseus and put it into the daily life of Leopold Bloom in, in Dublin. And you can actually, if you can look at a map and look at the mapping of, of the, the journey. Um, but you know, in that spirit of thinking about the heroism of everyday life, um, I, I wanna talk about the heroism that we have together here in ICES. Like Bloom, we live in a world of great challenges from climate change to the pandemic, um, to the economic disruption we all experienced and now 
um, tragically in war. Last year, scientists rose to a deadly challenge and created the vaccine that has enabled us all to, to sit comfortably here. Of course, not soon enough um, or um, resoundingly enough for many that we've lost. Um, but it, it really shows the incredible opportunities and the potential of science to change the world. In times of great challenge, heroes are born. The heroes of the coming decade will be scientists. The heroes of science must rise or we will all fail. I want to encourage you all to strive to be heroes. So what do I mean by this? First, we need to fully appreciate the heroic nature of our common purpose. Our challenge, sustainably using and preserving the marine environment, as in, is as important as any work to do in the world. In a broader sense, working across nations to find science-based management solutions for our world is the central challenge of our time. It's a unique gift to spend our lives in common pursuit of challenges so worthy of heroes. Our network, like the oceans that we study and enjoy, is an interconnected system. Our colleagues' successes are our own. Across oceans and nations, disciplines, and our personal histories, ICES allows us to break through barriers to empower one another to address, address the biggest challenges of our time. Being a hero also means embracing and celebrating the heroes in all of us. Bill talked about the initiatives that are, are in, um, ongoing at this point. We're dedicated to moving the secretariat, our expert groups, and the broader scientific community in a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive direction. Indigenous knowledge and the perspectives of all underrepresented groups offer us a richer understanding of our common world and oceans. In October, the ICE Council will consider a stakeholder engagement strategy uh, to promote better science throughout all of our work. To be a hero, you also need str strong alliances. Make new friends, deepen relationships. Some of my favorite people in, in ICES who I've known for, for many decades are Irish, so uh, it's especially great to be here to join them in, in their home country. Tonight, tonight, you might call this Guinness diplomacy, but however you do it, don't pass up on the chance to reach out and find time to connect. Walk up to the most interesting people here. Don't be shy. This is a warm, open family, and any effort to reach out will be warmly received. Next, to be a hero, you have to dream big. Diligence and urgency are both called for. Big challenges call for big ideas. To early career researchers and to everyone, I ask, what is your big wild idea? We will support you. Be bold. Finally, celebrate the success of your colleagues as your own. None of their successes would have happened without all of the hard work of everyone who has managed to, to, to develop our institutes, to create our network, and supports us every single day. I hope that your time in Dublin will inspires your masterpieces. I hope it doesn't take the decade that it took Joyce to write Ulysses. <laughs> Laugh, learn, and share, and walk through Dublin as a hero. With that, I turn the microphone over to Antonia to celebrate our award winners. Thank you very much. Good morning to the local organization, to the ICES representatives, and all researchers attending the conference. It is a great, a great pleasure to me to be here in Dublin. I love Irish literature, and wherever I'm without something to read in an unfamiliar place, I know I can never go wrong with a book from an Irish author. Just as I can never go wrong by presenting to you today, these distinguished colleagues, starting with the Prix d'Excellence, awarded every three years to a scientist that contributed to advancement of marine science. It was awarded in 2020 to Kenneth Frank and is being uh, presented here today due to COVID pandemic. Kenneth Frank has been a research scientist at Bedford Institute of Oceanography since 1983 and a professor at Dalhousie and Queen's Universities and evolved with ISIS since 1984. Having started in fish stock assessment and later focusing on ecology and ecosystem responses to fisheries and climate changes. In early 20s, uh, 2000s, Frank led an innovative series of investigations into the dynamics of large marine ecosystems and then 
their vulnerability to perturbation. His research led to the first documentation of a trophic cascade in a large marine ecosystem and this accelerated knowledge of dynamics of marine fresh waters and, research and terrestrial ecosystems worldwide. His peers say that there is a before and after Kenneth Frank in marine ecology, with marine ecosystems being perceived differently because of his research. And Kenneth's commitment and inspiration also extends, extends into his supervision and mentorships of the new generations of scientists. As such, it is with great pleasure that I invite you all to welcome Dr. Kenneth Frank to his stage to receive the Prix d'Excellence 2020. Wow, this is uh, really a special honor. I uh, am really, really, truly humbled by receiving this award. And I'd like to thank the awards committee for all the time and effort that they had spent in reviewing the nominations. I, I know that must have been a, a big task. I, I, I have a, just a few minutes, so this is, uh, I guess you'd call this a flash presentation. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say that being involved in ICES was very instrumental uh, early in my career. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of highlights. And the very first uh, experience I had with ICES was a symposium that was held at Woods Hole uh, in 1979. It was called the Early Life History Symposium, Early Life History of Fishes. And at the time, I was a postdoctoral fellow at McGill University working with uh, Dr. William Leggett, uh, who, by the way, nominated me for this award. So we drove uh, from Montreal to uh, Woods Hole uh, in a van. There were several of us and uh, had a wonderful time at the conference, met, uh, met people that you, know, you would read about in, uh, in, in, uh, in the scientific literature. Um, but the downside was uh, back in those days, we were on a tight budget and several of us stayed in a single hotel room. So that was, that was quite difficult. The, um, the next experience and the last one I want to share with you was uh, farther along in my involvement with ICES. I was a, asked to be a session chair at a symposium that was held in Reykjavik in 1994. This was the Cod and Climate uh, uh, Symposium. And uh, Jakob Jakobsen, who was the director of the Institute of Marine Research at the time, uh, he was the, the main convener and all of the session conveners he asked to meet before the start of the symposium uh, to tell us how to be an effective session uh, chair. Uh, he told us that we must stay on time. Any speaker that did not keep to the time allotted would be pulled off the stage and the session chair would be replaced by someone who would be more effective. <laughs> So at the start of my session, I was uh, heading up a, a, a full day session called Biology of Cod. I stood up 8 a.m. in the morning and announced that I was a recent graduate of the Jakob Jakobsen uh, School of Session Conveners. <laughs> and Jakob was sitting right there, uh, arms folded, uh, never smiled, uh, looked at me uh, as stern as ever, and very few laughs in the audience, and that's how the session began. <laughs> so I had, I've had many uh, really fond experiences with ICs. It's, uh, it's really been a, a wonderful experience. Uh, early career uh, scientists will benefit immensely uh, from their engagement with, with the ICs community. And with that, uh, thank you for having me here, and it's a pleasure uh, uh, to witness uh, 
this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Uh, the next award is the Outstanding Achievement Award with which we honor a member of our community. The recipient is recognized as one whose career has been distinguished by a continued commitment to excellence in endeavors of science, research, and leadership within ISIS. The 2020 Outstanding Achievement Award is given or was given to Clara Ulrich. Ulrich became Deputy Scientific Director at Ifremer Nantes Station in 2019, where she now leads the scientific strategy strategy, dealing with aspects linked to ecosystem-based fisheries management and support to national and European fisheries policies. Previously, she was a professor in fisheries man management at TTU Aqua in Copenhagen, the first ever. Her research areas encompass fisheries management, stock assessment and fisheries advice, bioeconomic modeling for management strategy evaluations, interaction with stakeholders, and their integration in participatory modeling. Clara Ulrich careers has been intertwined with ISIS for many years, attending her first ISIS annual science in 1998. The following year, at the ISIS annual science conference in Stockholm, she received the award for best newcomer. And by 2001, Ulrich was attending her first expert group. During her work, she has prioritized increasing the possibilities for stakeholder involvement in the scientific and advisory process, especially during this cardless a project she led. Clara has, through her engagement in critical legislative areas, played an important role in breaking down artificial barriers between fisheries scientists and fishers. So please join me. Congratulations, Clara. I'll start the same. Whoa, <laughs> that's huge. Thank you very much. I feel very, very proud to be here today. And actually, it feels like getting it twice, of course, two years later. And this really means a lot to me because two years ago, I was really in this full transition of life. I was explained, just uh, moving away. And that award came. It was a wonderful closing of, of 20 years of you know, intense uh, scientific emotions with the ISIS community, 20 years of Danish hug, and I was just closing this, this door and trying something else. Now, two years later, I look back, time has passed. I've settled well in my new life, way more French, <laughs> further away from ISIS, and it's just a different way to dedicate to science and to sustainable fisheries, but it's still very good. So thank you very much for this. I want to say a word, of course, to someone that many of us really miss today, and I will name uh, Sarah Crack. She passed this year. She was the one campaigning for me. She was the one collecting this later, and of course, I would have loved to see her today, watch me here on stage, but I mean, with this on my desk, her memory will not get lost from me. And finally, I would say, well, I only consider myself as a part-time feminist, but I would say I realize that maybe this, me getting this prize also has some symbolic in it. So I hope that I'm happy for this. I would say just so my last word really for women science, mothers in science, you know, yes, we can. And I say, of course, don't get me wrong. I also get my share of doubts and fears on the way. But I think really, um, I'm really thankful to the ISS community for all this friendship, support, fun, everything that brought me where I'm today. So I think ISS, we rock. Last year, the Outstanding Achievement Award <laughs> was given to Dave Reed. 
an ecosystem scientist and principal investigator at Marine Institute here in Ireland. Dave Reed has been an outstanding representative of ICES scientific community, which has played a crucial part in the continued development of a rational and productive role of management of our fish stocks. His career had, can be traced through the ICES expert group membership, starting with a focus on gears, surveys, data, and adapting surveys for ecosystem sampling evolving to include the ecosystem effects of fishing, ecosystems approach, integrated ecosystem assessment, and the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Reed's first involvement with ISIS was sharing the planning group on the HAC data exchange format, a role he held for six years since then, and since then, his impact in ISIS network has been extensive, having participated in many working groups, workshops, strategic initiatives, steering groups, and the science committee. Beyond this, uh, Reed has also led workshops and uh, steering groups, and he is still active member of many of these. Colleagues from both science and industry alike have praised Ray, Ray, Reed for the work he has led. Uh, in the ICES workshop on an ecosystem-based approach to fisheries management for the Irish Sea, which saw collaboration between uh, ecosystem scientists, fisheries, stock assessors, and fishers. From everyone in the ICES community, we say congratulations, Dave, and thank you for your continued work. Wow. Um, I think a, a lot of you know me as a rather grumpy old man, and, and, uh, and that's pretty true. But when, when this award, when I was told about this award last year, you know, in the depths of COVID year two, um, it was one of the most, still moves me actually, genuinely moving honour to have this happen. And I very rarely say that. So it, it was a delight to have it. And, uh, and it sort of made, makes me think back when I think about that planning group for hydroacoustic something or other, PG Hack, was possibly the most boring working group I have ever been on. You know, it was, had endless discussions of whether we use seven bit or eight bit values and, and you know, big and little endians. I, I've no idea anymore what that meant. And that was sort of where we started. And I, I remember going to my first ASC in St. John's about 260 years ago, and and uh, and nobody would talk to me. And I thought, oh, I hate this. I'm never coming back. Luckily, I then developed into this, and it's like my annual birthday party. Um, so thank thank you to you all. Um, you know, like all Oscar recipients, I want to thank all these people, but I'm gonna I'm gonna restrict that. It's it's basically I'm I'm the classic example of standing on the shoulders of giants. But the giants that I want to refer to are my team. And I think my, my single outstanding achievement really is that I know how to pick people. And I have some great people who have or are still working for me. And I wouldn't be receiving this prize if it wasn't for them. So this is an honour for them as well as me. Thank you very much. To present the Outstanding Achievement Award of 2022, I give the floor to Pierre Pitigan, the um, Council uh, Member, representative of the Awards Committee. Thank you, Antonina, and congratulations to the past awardees. So the show continues. Uh, we are now awarding the 2022 Outstanding Awards, um, Outstanding Achievement Awards. And in giving this award, 
we exemplify, as we've seen from previous uh, uh, addresses, the career of an inspiring and committed colleague who has made a difference. This year, it's a woman. She has helped energetically develop new approaches to apply science for advice. She has shown long-lasting contributions to um, many working groups, taken many responsibilities in chairing working groups, but also in creating new working groups. And she has also helped younger generations to grow. And by rewarding her, I think we are all connected because she is showing that we all progress together. Now you will discover who she is, who is the 2022 awardee by watching a video where she will explain with passion, her career and motivation. In my childhood, I wanted to contribute saving human lives. I wanted to be a doctor. When the time came to decide on higher education, I applied for biology. And that was because in the first year of the course, with the exception of anatomy, all the other subjects were common to the first year of the medicine degree. However, by the end of that first year, and having already the uh, underwater diving license and incredible experience exploring the ocean, I definitely decided to pursue biology. Later on, and I was fortunate to be accepted by the Portuguese Institute for Fisheries Research, now IPMA, uh, to complete my fifth year degree uh, with a thesis on fish biology and stock assessment under the coordination of Professor Kadima. So, sampling design for data collection, stock assessment and advice for fisheries management have been uh, the core of my professional career ever since. I have two uh, most important lessons I've learned throughout my career. The first one it's, uh, is that it always pay off to show that you know what you stand for and what you don't. And that professional but also personal growth can be highly enhanced by committing to challenges outside one's comfort zone. I am proud to have served ISIS in several capacities and roles. My involvement with ISIS began in early 90s as a member of the Southern Shelf Stock Assessment Working Group. So over the years, uh, I've also uh, contributed uh, as chair of working groups and, and workshops, and I am proud uh, to have contributed to challenging and important topics such as the, um, the introduction of the precautionary approach for fisheries management, the development of the ICES framework for MSY advice for data limited stocks with the work of all members of WK Life that I have co-shared with Carl O'Brien for the last 10 years, but also on the development and testing of uh, stock multi alloy management plans. This path allowed me to know well the organization and to testify the uh, professionalism of the ISIS Secretariat staff and the integrity, openness and collaborative work uh, that ISIS promotes within its uh, community. So this has been a remarkable experience and I could not uh, forget to be proud of it. It is inspiring for me to know that my work has practical application and is important for the society, meeting the needs of the fishing industry, stakeholders and managers for the conservation and sustainable uh, exploitation of marine resources. So if you ask me uh, which advices I uh, would give to uh, young scientists, I would choose three of them. So the first one is focus on the issues of your research topic or subject for which it really matters what the answer is. And always use critical thinking skills when listening to or reading other scientific arguments, but be willing to take a no for an answer if scientific evidence points that way. And finally, use your passion for science 
enthusiasm and persistence in day-to-day -day work to ensure that science and knowledge advances underpinned by good research practices. She's not virtual, she's real. I'm truly honored and deeply grateful to be receiving this outstanding award because it's from ISIS and for all that it represents. Uh, I have to confess that it was an amazing surprise for me because I know that all nominees must be exceptional and very nice people. So to pick up one is a difficult task, but of course I'm very happy to have been me. <laughs> Okay, so to IPMA and the ICS colleagues uh, with uh, whom I have been working for closely for more than 30 years uh, for having inspiring me and making me also contributing to making me the person I am today. So thank you so much. And now I plan to go and enjoy uh, this meeting and this annual science conference. And I must say, I'm really excited that we can meet all in person, uh, but also remotely. But of course, I can embrace some of the colleagues and friends I know for so many years. And that's, uh, I'm really happy for that. So thank you so much. Congratulations again, uh, Manuela, Dave, and Ken. And thank you, Pierre and, and Antonia as well. Um, so now, uh, thanks to the, the creativity of Jörn Schmidt and SciComm and some others, we're going to have a, a sort of novel panel opening keynote here of, of four panelists who, um, who are going to discuss the impacts of climate change on the North Atlantic and Irish waters. So. Um, Glenn Nolan is going to moderate this panel, so uh, I'll let him take over. And the, the um, panelists can please come forward.